Not so much teaching them, just giving them some exposure to what law enforcement driving is like uh, and mainly focusing on things they might encounter with pursuits or just as we call a uh, response, responding to some type of a scene uh, that they have to go to in an emergency. The big thing that uh, we're showing them here is it's just a, a standard driving track. There's nothing special about it. It's got the same type of turns and uh, curves that you'd experience on a normal roadway. Uh, we've just added some cones to simulate uh, a vehicle that's pulled through an intersection or a lot of times what you find on uh, roadways is when you come up behind somebody you might not be pulling them over but you're just approaching them trying to go past them when you've got your lights and sirens on and a lot of people don't know what to do so they just come to a complete stop in the roadway which basically blocks the entire road. Uh, just, just showing the uh, girls some ways that they can uh, deal with that. Uh, from the start, uh, in driver's ed, usually people are taught, look where you want the car to go. If you look that way, that's where you're going to steer and you're going to go. Uh, the problem they'll run into is you're on the roadway driving, uh, say a small child uh, on a bike steps out on the road in front of you or a car comes to a complete stop in front of you. If it startles you and then you focus solely on that object, when you've already taught yourself to drive where you're looking, you then, uh, without even thinking about it, unconsciously you drive right into that. You know, uh, Law enforcement will run into that to a lot where you will have a spare tire has fallen off a truck laying in the middle of the interstate. You know, the interstate is technically with the shoulders four lanes wide. And with all that area to drive, people will just drive right into the tire, you know, and you'll ask them later, why'd you do that? I don't know. Well, it's because they saw the tire, it scared them, they focused on it, and they drove right into it. You know, nothing they can help. And, and that's basically what we're giving them the experience with. And, of course, they want to feel a little bit of the G's of getting thrown back and forth and the heavy braking and stuff. And they, and they get some of that experience, too. They have a good time. They enjoy it. And that's what, at the end of the day, that's what we want them to do here is have a good time. We, we call it a mini camp. Uh, they get up every day at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, they go out. They have some physical fitness training, which is a little different each day. They can do some stretching, some, some basic calisthenics, push-ups, sit-ups, uh, you know, a little bit of stretching. They do some running. Uh, they'll deal with our obstacle course. Sometimes they push some cars. Uh, basically, everything that uh, our recruits deal with, they deal with as well. Same with the classes. They get exposure to uh, firearms. They get exposure to, to driving. Uh, they get exposure to radar and how all the radar and speed measuring devices work. Uh, they're doing some patrolling where they're actually going to make traffic stops on mock drivers, things like that. They also learn about all different branches of investigative services, criminal, drug. Uh, they learn about the uh, bomb technicians, uh, it, all sides. They also get exposure to other, we bring other law enforcement agencies in. They talk to some of the county officials, some of the PDs, the FBI, Game and Parks. Uh, everybody comes in and talks to them. They get some history. They just, they get an all around uh, exposure to the law enforcement world. And I think they make a lot of friends. Uh, these girls have come, if you've seen, from all over the state. They're roomed. We try to purposely room them with people from far ends of where they're from so they get to meet different people. And uh, you'll see these girls later, uh, a couple years down the road, uh, you'll run into them somewhere and you ask them. And they say, oh, yeah, I'm still in contact with so-and-so or whoever their roommate was. Even though they've never seen each other since this week, they're on far ends of the state, they still keep in contact. So there, there's some good bonds made while they're here. In our last few camps, we've actually had people who have uh, come through the uh, junior law, pro law program and then later come back. Uh, the other uh, fellow driving with me on the outside track, Sergeant Cavan. Um, he is from a state patrol family. His brother and his uncle both are troopers. He came through junior law and uh, then eventually came on to be a, uh, a trooper. So uh, you see it sometimes, but uh, yeah, the, the junior law program has been around, uh, you know, 30 some years. And uh, if anything, it gets the word out and hopefully it gives them a little bit of exposure. They know more about what goes on in law enforcement, you know, and uh, answer some of those questions they have. There is, as you said, uh, if, if you if we uh, learned everything we learned about any profession from Hollywood, uh, you're sadly disappointed or very surprised when you find out the truth. Uh, I, I often have to tell our recruits when they come through the academy, I say, I, I hate to tell you, but now that you're here, I'm about to ruin all your favorite movies. Uh, I'm going to ruin Hollywood for you. Nothing's going to make sense, and you're going to be very disappointed. Movies, you know, shows like CSI or, you know, 24, any of those shows that uh, really have some glaring misconceptions about law enforcement, uh, it, it gets exposed while they're here. I want to go into criminal justice and just, I don't know, I like the field. I like job, I've job shadowed cops before in my hometown, so. Well, we just drove a state patrol car. First, you got to go around the obstacle course and there's cones and you pretend like they're people. And then uh, you have to like go around the cones so you don't hit the people. And then, I don't know, then you, the second time you get to go around and it's uh, full time and it's timed, so.
Uh, I thought it'd be neat. My dad's a state trooper. I just kind of wanted to see what he did to train for it, and it's pretty intense. <laughs> Today, we are driving cop cars really fast, basically, around a course. It's pretty neat. We wake up in the morning, and then we run, and we have to make our beds really nice, and we go through some classes, then we eat classes, and then supper. We do a couple more classes, and then we clean up and go to bed, so it's a pretty full day. I am looking to go into law enforcement and it'll help me get a grasp on what I'll actually be doing. My grandpa is actually a police officer in Keith County and I want to follow in his footsteps so I just came here to see if it was anything that has interested me and yes it has been hard but I have not lost sight in wanting to be a police officer so.